The storyteller wrote a new story right before our eyes. A man from afar falls to a golden curse and a woman from afar cries out in grief. This passage could be referring to Mr. Wright and Miss Fay. We must hurry over to them at once. I have a terrible feeling something will happen at the alchemist's house today. Okay. Okay, so we were... I think we were gonna go over here. Because I believe this is the actual crime scene. Whoa, why is the floor... Okay, wait. So there was green paint on the other wall, but there's white paint all over the place here. It's not a cr Maya, <laughs> what is wrong with you? Hey, look, Nick, they're on the floor. It's one of those, whatchamacallits, you know, a, a crop circle, right? Maya, you, you deal with spiritual stuff all the time. Do you not know a magic circle? Well, I mean, I know it's a different kind of thing, but still. That's an alchemist circle, Maya. We're not in a wheat field. <laughs> what is that? What is wrong with her? I'm sorry to repeat myself, but please be sure not to touch anything. You heard him, Maya. That means keep your hands to yourself. No problem. I'll just do the touching with my eyes. Oh, like every man everywhere with your eyes. Please don't touch things with your eyes. Hey, that's a cool thing. Give me that hint coin. That doesn't count as touching, right? I'm investigating. It's fine. Is this just a... Are these just beads for... You know... <laughs> you know. <laughs> beads? Okay, there's gotta be another hint coin. Ah! Hint coin. A curiously shaped implement. No idea what it's used for. Yeah, of course not. Use paper clipping? That looks like an incense cone. This could be a device for turning bread into gold! That, yes, that's exactly what we do with bread. That's a globe of the night sky. A lot of bottles. There we go. Hey, that's a pretty little picture over there. We could use a picture like this back at the office, don't you think? We could hang it right next to Charlie. Is Charlie the plant? I think the plant had a name. Hmm. Hmm? What is it, Nick? The wall behind this picture frame. The wall? Oh, that! It seems like there's some kind of green mark on the wall just by the painting. I wonder if there's something hidden behind this painting, but we're not allowed to touch it! I don't, we're... Hey, Nick, look at this! The wall behind the painting, it's painted green! Is there a problem? Uh, no, n no problem. This could be some kind of clue. We gotta get this kid out of here. And then the floor, it's like, is that powder or paint? It looks like a load of white powder has been scattered around the desk. Uh, about this white powder. Has it been here since the incident? Oh, you found Master's cocaine stash! Is that, it was just... Wow. That's right, it was like this when I just... What? It was just like this when I entered the room on the morning following the incident. I have left it this way ever since. Master loved his cocaine. I guess someone must have dropped a container full of some medicine. Please try not to walk in it. You may leave footprints. Now that he said it, I wanted, all I want to do is leave little old footprints all over the place. It'll be like, Maya was here. Wow, Maya. Good fucking job. Medicine, yeah. Here, yeah, I'm gonna poke you now. You ready? What's the matter, Mr. Grey Arrow? Oh, it's, uh, actually, it's that pendant. I must say, I find it fascinating. Oh, you mean this old thing? It's called a Magatama. It makes me a witch. Magatama? Yep, you could say it's 
kind of like my source of power, I guess. That, mm, I, mm, that, I don't think you should say that in a place where they hate magic. I understand. Stones are often charged with energy, after all. The pendant you're wearing is pretty neat, too. It's such a mysterious color. Purple. Mysterious. Oh, this? It's an amethyst. Master Belduke asked me to wear it. An amethyst? The amethyst brings about good vibrations in an alchemy sense. Looks like those good vibrations killed your master. Uh, Mr. Grey Earl? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just remembering Master Belduke. He gave me the stone and accepted me as his assistant alchemist. But now, master... Such is the order of the natural world. Yeah, where your master just gets killed by witches, I guess. Seems like Grey Earl, Grey Earl really misses him. He must have really respected Sir Belduke. Oh, look at Maya. She's so sad. It's okay, Maya. We'll just figure out what's going on with this crop circle. Oh. Oh, okay. I was like, up the game? Belduke is sad. He's dead. He's de I mean, that's the saddest you can be, I guess. Or happiest, I guess. Depending? Well, I think we've just about investigated everything we can for now. We didn't find any leads on the Great Witch. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Grey Earl? Yes? What is it? Is there anywhere else you can think of where we might find more clues? Let me see. Well, there is a cellar under the study. That's where Master kept his research materials. A cellar under this room? Yes, there's a trap door down in the floor leading down to the cellar. A room containing Belduke's research materials. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a quick look at that room. Let me see, very well. If you'll please just wait a moment. Going down to Bell Duke Sex Dungeon! That ladder leads down into the cellar, but be careful, it's rather dark down there. Looks like it might be a little cramped down there, too. That's true. Perhaps it is a little bit small for the both of you at once? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! You want to be really British? You can pronounce Master like Marster? British is weird. See, this is why I can't do an accent. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> oh, believe me, Grey Earl. We've made bigger things fit. Okay, Nick. This seems more like your kind of thing anyway. Uh, what do you mean? You're smaller. I don't know. I guess you're just more suited to small, dark, damp places. What am I? <laughs> a mold? Oh, not a rat, you know. Instead of master, it's monster, like master. Mar master. I need to watch more British people talk. Sorry, Zunder, you're not enough. You're not British enough for club. I need like that, the, the British accent where you can barely understand what they're saying. Not a rat, you know. Come on. You know that's not what I mean. I'll just stay up here and snoop around for some clues. RC always makes fun of you. Really? Wow. It's not snooping, Mai. It's investigating. Anyway, you do that. I'll be right back. Ignore that it's basically the same thing. Yay! Way to go, Nick! Hey, uh, wow. I got this message that's totally not spam. Who the hell are you? Okay. Dear boss at home, recruit project partners and in two, earn two hundred to one thousand dollars a day. Click to view. It's WhatsApp. Why I can't click on a WhatsApp? Uh, report spam. Block. Fail. I know. I just turned down an opportunity to make two that two hundred to one thousand dollars a day. <laughs> Sorry, I had to check some stuff. It's my mom's birthday today, so I wish her happy birthday. If you're my friend on Facebook, make sure to like and subscribe. Actually, no. You can say happy birthday to her, too, if you want, I guess. 
all of one person who's <laughs> my friend on Facebook in this stream. Oh wait, no, Zyla is too. <laughs> I was like, RC, because I just added you like two days ago. Not Zunder though. Zunder doesn't do anything with his account. Yeah, she might even be in here. We'll have to see. I'll have to call her after stream. I mean, she is five hours behind, so I'm pretty set on, on the amount of time that I have to call her. Well, I should return to my room. Please give me a call as soon as you're both finished. Oh, boy. Okay, got it. <gasps> Wait, the tiny child assistant is leaving. Does that mean that we can pull down this poster? No, never. There's a goat. A golden goat. Uh, ugh, it's a little chilly down here. Doesn't look like it's been used much. The air is so musty and stale. Yeah, they didn't have fans back then. Anyway, better hurry up and take a look around. Looks like a sculpture of a goat, I think. Something about it gives me the creeps. Wait a second, is this? This thing is completely made of gold. In that moment, Phoenix thought about becoming a thief. Could this be the result of alchemy? And I guess in this town, anything's possible. If Maya were here, she'd break her back trying to take the goat away with her. Oh no, is Phoenix gonna get turned into a gold statue with his finger outstretched? It's strange. Almost everything in this room is covered in a layer of dust. Everything except for the that goat, that is. Seems to have been kept in pristine condition. Yeah. So what? Grail comes down and rubs his master's goat every day. Money! What's this? A map? Who uses maps? Bonk! I thought there were like two hint coins in rapid succession. Now the other hint coin is there! Hell yeah, I have so many hint coins! Plenty of sketches and drawings. Nothing useful for us. Why is this candle lit down here, though? Looks like Sir Belduc studied alchemy here, too. I don't see anything medicine-like, but there sure is a lot of equipment. This desk is pretty messy. Not a speck of dust, though. I guess Grey Earl must be keeping it clean. There's a wooden box by the desk, filled with all kinds of junk. A doll is peeping out of the box. Well, I mean, it's, I, I, well wishes are fine. My mom doesn't know all of my friends. It's okay. A doll, <gasps> the doll is peeping. Gross. Wonder if it was left by a little girl who was one of the doctor's patients. What if the doll is the little girl? Looks like Sir Beldu carried out research here as well. Okay, cool. <gasps> what about this chair? This chair has butt marks, I think. Like the entire planet mysterious book worlds are littered with hint coins. I know, I wish I could find hint coins. They're probably worth, they're probably like solid gold. A butt chair. What was Belduke's research about? Will all his work be lost now that he's gone? The poor potted plants are starting to wither. I'm gonna get some water for them. Well, 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 if this isn't a well, Looks like it's still in use, too. What the... Come on, Phoenix. Guessing you need quite a bit of clean water for alchemy. Come to think of it, I haven't noticed any plumbing here in Labyrinthia. Well, looks like I've pretty much seen all there is to see down here. The room doesn't seem to have been used much, and there's nothing I can see that might provide a lead. If I stare any longer, I might just end up covered in dust myself. Not to mention, standing here sighing is kind of clogging up my lungs. Maybe it's time I head back upstairs. I should probably see how Maya's doing. Did you drop a golden phoenix right? Or a silver phoenix right? Oh, it's the, it's the fancy colorful minstrel. This is the alchemist's house. We have to hurry. B Professor? Wait, oh, wait for me. I'm tiny, remember? Oh man, so apparently, fuck that minstrel. Hi, Professor. What's up? You look flushed. Where's Mr. 
Mr. Wright. Have you seen him? Oh, Nick. He's just down in the basement doing some investigating. He should be back up soon. So how did it go? Did you get to see the storyteller? Yeah, and it was bad. Please, get Mr. Wright immediately. It's safer if we're all together in one place. I'll explain later. Just hurry. Huh? As things stand, Mr. Wright is in serious danger. Nick's in danger? What do you mean? What? What is that? Danger? What's danger? I have reason to believe that a witch will appear here soon. <laughs> oh no, the witch sound happened. <gasps> Oh no! Oh. Oh, oh. All is as written in the story. <gasps> Do you happen to be the great witch Bazella? Concern yourselves not with who I am, but rather with what you will now become. What? A gentleman? Quick, pull out your sword! Um, we just left Luke outside, I guess. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Whatever's the matter, child, you look positively flushed. Sir Belduke is no longer resident here. You'll need to go elsewhere for your medicaments. I know that. Just let me through. It's a matter of life or d life and death. Oh, his name is Birdly. Oh, boy. Life and death, you say? If so, then I may foresee a hit ballad. Raise up your hearts and sing with Birdly. My bird is Cracker. First, second, and thirdly. What? Where's your... Where's Cracker? Ah, this must be that rival Mr. Bardley was talking about. A a a anyway, I am in a hurry. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Yeah, get, get out of here, Miss Primstone. Why are they coming in? Why is the drunk man here? <laughs> No, I no! Ah! Lighten! Oh no! Oh, his arm! Ah! What is happening? No! It wasn't me. Oh no! No! His arm! What? Quite the way to freaking start today, Professor Layton. Damn, how is he gonna burn people when he's made out of gold? Ah, no! <laughs> ah, he's not talking because he's made out of gold. Wow, attention to detail. The boy dead had a had golden intuition. <laughs> he did, and now. Professor Layton was turned into a gold statue through witchcraft in the alchemist's residence. How could this be? Hey, hi, hey, Dave, how's it going? Sorry, I just there's some serious things just happened, and I'm I'm very emotional right now. My favorite top-hatted man is made out of solid gold, and his arm broke off. Oh no, it's gonna. Oh, okay, it's funny that. He can still talk about everything else, <laughs> but himself. I wonder if once he becomes not gold, he'll say something. Oh boy. I know, I wasn't expecting him to just, I thought, <laughs> I thought Nick was gonna be the one who, you know, died. Not that I want Phoenix to die, but Professor, wow, I have so many, I gotta go to Riddell, guys. I. 
I don't know if I'll have a chance to go there, though, since it's trial time. He was probably like, you shall not pass. And then he got to turned to gold. <laughs> the golden court, get it, because he's a statue. I want to know why, um, a bell, L, L. I can't remember. Something, I forgot the man's name. Why the fuck was he there? Yeah, it's because I was plotting. It's, no, this one is absolutely fantastic, Dave. Like, it is crazy good. Like, I gotta say, you know what? I'm really glad that I'm playing this game now because I needed a break from just straight up uh, Phoenix Wright. This is very good. It's probably the best, like, of the series so far. I'm not gonna lie. Like, Apollo Justice was kind of eh for me. Dual Destinies was quite good. But I think it's just, like, the various aspects in here on top of, like, the regular ones just make it very, very good. Did a switcheroo? It does- oh! Hi! Thank you for 25 months, Seer. That's enough time for- <gasps> We're almost up to three Twitch babies! That's a lot of babies, by the way. Yeah, it's- It is super fucking good. I would highly recommend it, Dave. It's- it's very good. I might be a little bit biased, because I've played through two of the Professor Layton games, and I freaking love them. Um, but it's- it's- It's so worth it. Your energy is shot. Did you work today, Seer? Or is it your day off? No. It, it doesn't make any sense. How has it come to this? The darned witches. It's okay, Phoenix. You can say fuck. They, they did bad stuff. You cleaned? Yeah, that's good. You should send me more pictures. I like seeing progress. Like when you cleaned your, your, your cabinet. Oh no, you gotta work through. Oh no. That's so many days of early. Why did it have to be the professor of all people? You've gotta believe me, Nick. I may be a spirit medium, but, but I'm no witch. Don't worry, I know it wasn't you. This is like the fifth time you've been accused for something you haven't done. Oh shit, thank you <laughs> for Professor Layton, yes. Everybody, can you please donate to the Turn Professor Layton to Not Gold Fund? All proceeds will go to me, but eventually he'll probably change back and I'll say that it was all thanks to you and your generous donations. <clears throat> it's also for America. Everybody loves donating when you say it's for America. <laughs> Sorry, that's a low blow. Oh, have fun all of you people with MAGA hats. So many people left? Yeah, aww. That's crazy. I mean, did that other guy finally recover and, like, get back to work? Hmm? Say, have you seen Luke today? I haven't seen him since last night. He's probably, like, in a really bad way. He was crying all night. I didn't know what to say to him. No kidding. He's the one suffering the most from all this. Poor kid. He probably needs some time alone with his grief. We should leave him be. I feel like he's gonna come with some decisive evidence later on. Yeah, he shouldn't have to see this trial. It'd be too hard for him. Oh, hi, Espella. Did they let you out of prison? For a minute? Oh, it's Espella! What are you doing here, Spella? Have you been cleared of the accusations? No, not yet. If only it was that easy. It's just that... I'm not technically under arrest, so I got special permission to come here. I'm free to go wherever I like within this building. That's not very much, but okay. I see. Um, I... I heard about Mr. Layton! It's awful! He was such a good man! I've only known him for like three days, but he seemed cool. Hmm, I'm sorry, Espella. Huh? Oh, what are you apologizing for? We were supposed to find clues connected to Bazella, but we couldn't find anything. And now the professor's been... No, don't say that. It's not your fault. And I don't believe a word of what they say about Maya. She isn't a witch. Thank you, Espella. 
Um, Mr. Wright, do you mind if I assist you in court today with my witch magic? Huh? I know I may not be of much use, but I'll do what I can. I want to help you and Maya. Spella. Excuse me. Oh. Ah, oh, it's- hello! Maya, can you not get arrested for more than five minutes? Yeah, I know, that would be nice. She has a problem. It's her kink. She's like, man, I love almost being arrested, but at the last minute, not being arrested. And Phoenix is like, please stop. My reputation's on the line. Y your Gray Earl, butler of the late Master Belduke, I have come to inquire after Miss Maya. It is most regrettable that what happened yesterday. Oh, thank you for coming all the way here. Oh, uh, sorry. I think you're guilty. Hmm? You look really pale, Jean. Are you all right? Oh, please don't worry about me. It's merely that since the incident, sleep has eluded me. I'm traumatized for life. I also know the fact Nick and Leighton are like in the same field. Yeah, I know. It's it's ridiculous, honestly. I gotta say though, when they when they do the back to back double point, I'm like, holy shit! Although, yeah, oh, geez. Oh, I spent the night searching through mas the master's notes on alchemy. I hope there may be some mention of a method by which something turned to gold may be reverted back to its original form. We need to reattach his arm first. I don't want to turn him back and be like, sorry, Leighton, your pointing arm is gone. You were looking for a way to rescue the professor? Human fate is often cruel, but that's also why we must never lose hope. Jean! Defender! Accused! The trial is about to start. Proceed to the chamber. You missed a lot. It's okay. Uh, Leighton got turned to gold. Y yes, we're coming! Nick. Jeremiah, I'm not just gonna let them sentence you. I just wish all this would stop already, whether someone's a witch or not. Yeah, no, he's lit. He got turned into a gold statue. I'm surprised nobody clipped that. I'll probably highlight it later. No one deserves to be burned. I know. Can't stand for it either. Uh, Gray Earl, are you a witch? Whoa, 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 wait, 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 Gray Earl. You're brooch. That is not amethyst. That's an emerald now. Hmm? If you'll kindly excuse me now, I must return to my duties. Ah, no problem. We uh, appreciate you coming to see us. Bye. Something's bothering me. Jean seems somewhat odd today. Let's go, Mr. Wright. The trial is about to begin. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, she's in the cage of burning. No. <clears throat> the trial of Maya Fey shall now begin as scheduled. Did he, he said it as scheduled. Knights of the court, are you ready to cross your swords of justice? I'm always ready to cross my sword of justice. Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum always has his sword ready for the work of justice. Is that right? Is that why you're so popular with the ladies, Barnum? Uh, defense ready, your honor. At this stage, I just gotta give it all I've got. It would appear the Defender has thrown down the gauntlet, Sir Barnum. Are you ready to receive it? Now, before we begin, may I have a word with you, Defender? Yes, Your Honor. Last time we met, you stood in this court as an apprentice baker. In all honesty, when I saw you for the first time, I thought to myself, a baker should stick to bread baking. Yeah? Is that so? What a fine first impression I made. 
However, today you are not merely some befuddled maker of sweet buns. I'm obliged to fully recognize you. <laughs> Don't talk about my befuddling buns, sir. As a knight of law and justice, on par with Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum. Ooh! Ah, and Barnum's like, oh, I'm just baker? Taking my thunder? Now may your duel begin. Fight bravely and expose the truth behind this heinous crime. Wait, did you say heinous or did you say anus? I'm just making, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things All happening right, right now, sir. Counting on you, Inquisitor Barnum. I knew she was a witch as soon as I laid my eyes on her. She's got witch written all over her. <laughs> Why not put the baker on trial? Bake the baker, I say! Wow, shut up! Uh, when are they gonna yell my name? Where, when are you guys gonna say right? They treat him like some sort of celebrity. He may be adored by the crowds, but when he pointed his sword my way, you managed to shield me from his accusations. Yeah. Maya clearly isn't a witch, so surely your victory is certain. Thank you for believing in me, Espella. Espella Cantabella. <gasps> yeah, there's so- I didn't realize there was so much flashing that happens whenever, like, something goes today. on. However, that does not mean that the charges against you have been dropped. Rather than worry about others, you should consider your own situation. Shut up, Barnum! <laughs> Unless they're a dick. Thank you for granting me your permission, Inquisitor. Inquisitor Barnum, you may begin your opening statement. Also, first things first, I gotta need to check this. Okay, so we know about Demir. Yeah, okay, the guy's name is Amir. Oh, there's no other ones? Okay, I swear to- there's gotta be something in there that uses a, um, an amethyst. Which is probably what Luke's gonna, he's probably what he's looking up. I bet that's gotta do something with the gold spell because obviously, I, I didn't check the cutscene to see if there was a purple crystal in there, but I feel like it might have been Grey Earl. I don't know, we'll have to see. I mean, Grey Earl's also tiny. That witch lady wasn't very tiny. As you wish, my lord. As usual, let us commence this trial by first recounting the events, if it pleases you, Sir Blue Knight. As, uh, you wish, Inquisitor. So I can't get used to this terminology. Wait, let me check something. Okay, so we just have Maya Fey. To look after- he has looked after his residence and researched it. yeah, but... I don't know, Jean Grey Earl. This heinous crime occurred in the residence of the late Newton Belduke, the alchemist. Here is the sketched plan of his residence. Thanks, royal sketcher! Oh, beautiful. This room, of a somewhat questionable nature, is the alchemist study in which the incident took place. The only ones present at the moment of the crime were the accused and the victim, no one else. The witnesses who arrived at the scene seconds later have indicated that they were found that where they found the accused and the victim. Very well, the sketch is accepted as evidence. The accused took Sir Layton's life with the most cruel of magic. A living man one second, a golden statue the next. Such wickedness. Magic that turns things into gold, sure, why not? Several townspeople rushed to the room and paid witness to the horror of this magic. The accused has been captured and charged. Goodness, that is terrifying. The rumors have reached me that the victim was a most scintillating man. I'm not quite certain whether it was prior to it or after. But incidentally, was this Sir Leighton not the same hat maker who attended our previous trial? No, he wasn't a hat maker. Bizarre as it is, Sir Layton's profession and origin remain unknown. He was a stranger in the city. That is all we know. What? 
And you, sir, his acquaintance, you are an unusual presence in our city yourself. Hmm. Today's case certainly is peculiar. And that is not the last of the peculiarities, my lord. The alchemist's study has been the scene of another strange incident in the past. Ah, yes, I remember it as if it were yesterday. The mysterious death of Newton Belduke himself. Well, it was only like a few months ago, so. Indeed, my lord. Regrettably, the only case of witchcraft still to remain unsolved in our fair city. The witch may have escaped her punishment back then. But perhaps today is the day on which we both on which both these mysterious crimes be solved. What what are you implying? Patience, you will know soon enough, sir suddenly pale blue knight. Shut up, Barnum! How interesting. It seems that the Inquisition have something up their sleeve. Now, Inquisitor Barnum, you may begin. Thank you, my lord. The Inquisition summons the witnesses to this malicious crime of witchcraft. Only, only I'd made it to that room sooner. Wow, you know, Leighton was saying the same thing. Maybe I could have prevented all this from happening. I won't let Maya take the rap for this. I'll find every single crack in their testimony and prove it wasn't her. Welcome to the witch's court, honorable witnesses. Now let us hear your names and occupations. What the, f where the hell did you get all of that? Excuse me, sir. What the? What is happening? I am known far and wide as a mere Punchinbog. I soon to be the head of Punchinbog's retail organization, Pro. Hang on. But, wait a minute, witness. Was that Blue Squire? You're that guy from the previous trial. Just, what the heck's happened to you? You look like you've been on one of those ultimate makeover shows. Uh, whatever do you mean? My name is Amir Punchinbog. I soon to be the head of the Punchinbog's retail organization, uh, pro. What is the meaning of this, Inquisitor? I do not care to delve into this witness's personal affairs. Looks like he remembers him all too well. Witnesses pray continue. What is that you're putting in there? That's, that was definitely poison. That was definitely poison. Oh, dearie, dearie me. It is I who usually ask the questions. I am, you see, but a humble teacher. Call me Ms. Primstone. She looks like a dom. The children of a Labyrinthia primary school have the privilege of learning the truths about this world from me. Elementary school teacher, huh? Good to know at least one of the wit- <laughs> At least one witness seems sensible. Oh, come on, you're gonna regret that. The winds carry my song. It's birdly stringing along. Parrot and bard, ensemble avant-garde. My faithful muse here is Cracker the Musical Parrot. No one understands music like Cracker, aside from me, naturally. Oh, dearie, dearie me. At least it's not another goat. Oh, there's always, there's always an animal involved now. What a smart bird. He just imitated that teacher perfectly. It's all of it. Yeah, they're all lies. It's okay. Ah, Luke! Luke! Luke, are you okay? I'm Luke Triton. My occupation is the professor's apprentice. Uh, Luke? Luke, but why? 
are you doing there? I made up my mind. I'm doing this for the professor. A gentleman has to pursue the truth. So this is... No, it's not Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. It's Luke Triton versus Phoenix Wright. But it's not as cool as Professor Layton. Or, so they, they went with that. But Luke, that's where the Inquisition's witnesses stand. I, I'll never, I'll never forgive that witch. A gentleman shouldn't glare at people as if he wants to hit them in the face. L Luke, remember when we solved puzzles together that one night? Your friend today can be your enemy tomorrow. Such is the hard reality of the battlefield. Witnesses, we will now hear your testimonies. Tell us all of this wicked incident, which you have been unfortunate enough to witness. Wow. Man, that, that is definitely poison. That man wants to die. What we witnessed. I heard a scream and an incantation, and then when I entered the room, the victim was already all shiny. Mayhap something caused discord between erstwhile friends? Mr. Silk Hat had a knife at the ready in his hand. Hmm, victim of magic, sparkly and done for. I heard the staff fall on the floor. The professor must have seen through Miss Maya's deception and confronted her right there, face to face. Luke, you dumb bastard. <gasps> I see. Thank you all. Uh, however, one part of the testimony was somewhat confusing. You there, the singer? Uh, singer? Could you possibly mean me, Birdly the Bard, your excellence? Yes, uh, that would be you, singer. This staff that you said sung about... Yeah! Whoa! Hey! Look at that! Where did that amethyst come from? It is as you suspect, my lord. This very witch's scepter. Whoa! There are two different magic gems attached, meaning the perpetrator could have used two types of magic. Yeah, it would seem so. This gem here enables the use of a gold transmutation spell, Goldor. Goldor, just the word alone makes the tiny hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Ha ha ha! That's the one, all right! That's the dreadful incantation that I, Amir Punchenbarg, also heard. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I have seen that scepter, so I have. He's, you know, he is, but in an old-timey way, so he's slightly less dumb, maybe. Or maybe he just seems less dumb because... He'll never know what a phone is because phones don't exist. Clank tips over the golden man. The scepter falls, not the witch's plan. Yeah, so he basically he's the norm of the era. Oh, dearie, dearie me. How dare she do that to the professor? By the way, this witch's scepter was found on the floor near the victim. If you'll turn your attention to the sketch plans, it was located right here. A scepter dropped by the accused would naturally tumble to exactly that spot. Really? How, how do you know that? Inquisitor Barnum, what you're saying amounts to nothing more than a baseless assumption. <laughs> I know, this fanfic, exactly. <laughs> you know exactly where all those fingers are going. Into the faces of the accused! Or the, the, the other guilt, the guilty people, not the not guilty people. I'm not sure where I was going with that. Let's not worry about that. You're on edge today, Sir Blue Knight. Is it because your friend is on trial? <laughs> Perhaps you had better cool yourself down. Wow, shut up. Well, anyway, this court accepts the scepter as evidence. Thank you, my lord. Talea Magica. It's another magic stick. Thank you so much for the host, V. A magic scepter necessary for casting spells. Contains a golden and a purple magic gem. Okay, uh, well, can we look up those other things in here, guys? We know about new spells. No, there we go. Transmutes the caster's target into solid gold. 
The spell will transmute the closest target within range. So they had to be like super close then. The spell Goldor has been added to the war record. Um, Inquisitor Barnum, may I ask you something? What is it now, Sir Blue Knight? We know that one of the gems is for the spell Goldor, but what about the other one? I'm the one, you know what? I'm the one with the book. Why don't I just look in the book? <laughs> a naive question, huh? Naivety may be no hindrance to a baker who spends most of his time amidst bread, but it can be your undoing here in court. Would a knight put weapon a weapon in his enemy's hand? Uh, he's telling me to do my homework, huh? Mr. Wright, I'll look for information about that magic gem in the Grand Grimoire. Thank you, Espella. That would be great. I don't have eyes myself that I could totally use to do such things. Instead, I'll just put it on you. The one who's not a witch. Definitely not a witch. Never, never once witched in her life. Just leave it to me. She seems very happy to help. The defender may interrogate the witnesses. Sorry, there's a lot. Cross examination. Yeah, exactly. This is true. He kind of bluffs, points his finger, and wins because of the efforts of everyone else. But then he pieces it all together, which is enough for him to, to win. What we witnessed. Ah, just scream and an incantation. Yeah, okay. Press. Who screamed? And, um, what is all of this about exactly? What do you mean, Blue Squire? Your gaudy, uh, colorful outfit. I mean, your attire was different last time. A little more modest? The Amir you knew back then is no more. I am a new man now, reborn into the higher echelons of society. Uh, what's he drinking? There's a skull and crossbones mark on that bottle. Enough idle chatter. The witness heard a scream and an incantation. Is that correct? That's right. It's just like what you said earlier, Inquisitor Barnum. Uh, nobody's reacting yet. It was the spell Goldor, and it was without a doubt the voice of the accused there that said it. Hmm, however, it's rather peculiar. When I saw the accused and the victim together last time, they seemed to be on friendly terms. The next witness will dispel your doubts, my lord. Oh god, they're tripping me up by having the faces show up. Because nobody was reacting to anything. Unless, is there a chance that they'll know stuff even if they don't react to it? Are they debating me? Okay, may have something cause discord. Okay, press. Are you saying you think they quarreled? The other day, I saw you all together in this very court, and you were evidently friends. Yeah. Ace Attorney Universe, it's actually neither. I mean, I'd say it probably leans more in the favor of Professor Layton, because Professor Layton, the, in the universe, they tend to get pulled into kind of otherworldly situations. Um, but yeah, it's non-canon. But technically, well, that's the funny thing, because Professor Layton, I think, happens at an older time, like the 1960s or 50s or something like that. Whereas Phoenix Wright always happens like present day or future. So the fact that they were both in London at the same time is already an oddity. Um, because they don't live in the same, like, time period, even though they both technically live on Earth. But right now they're both in a, um, in a magical fantasy world called Labyrinthia. Which is inside a book! Isn't that great? Yeah, it's true, but what's that got to do with... Now, everyone listen carefully. No chatting in the back row. What I say now will be in the next, next exam. Better listen, Luke. Ms. Primstone's lesson number five. Friendship leads to nothing but trouble. Wow, you're a peach. 
People would not break up and part their ways in anger if they did not become friends in the first place. The kids in our class must grow up to be model citizens. Oh, dearie, dearie me, what I saw in that room curdled the blood in my veins. Mr. Silkhat was pointing that glittering knife ever so threateningly. Whoa, question! The boy! Is everything okay, Luke? No, of course it's not okay. The professor was a true gentleman. And no gentleman would go around threatening people with knives. He uses rapiers like a real gentleman. I couldn't agree more. Silly boy, I saw your professor pointing a knife. Are you insinuating that I'm a liar, you cheeky little whippersnapper? The professor would never do that. You don't know him. Yeah, he was only pointing his finger. At least Luke's found someone else to antagonize. Um, Mr. Wright? Hmm? What is it? I think there's some important information in Miss Primstone's testimony. Really? Oh, I'm sorry. It's not my place to say things like that. No, I need all the help I can get. Hmm, I didn't notice anything. What could that be? What was Espella about to say? No, ask her to speak out. Espella, why don't you tell us all what you've noticed? Oh, is that okay? It's just something I'd like to ask Miss Primstone about. Well, just go ahead and ask her. Um, excuse me, Miss Primstone. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Oh, it's you, Miss Spella Cantabella. Uh, Miss Primstone, did you actually see the knife that Mr. Layton was holding? I, I, I did, as a matter of fact, yes. I remember that glinting blade very well. A most frightening sight it was, too. And you saw that from the door, didn't you? Now, if we look at the sketch... When the incident took place, Mr. Layton must have been facing this way, correct? Hmm, that must have been the case, otherwise the witness would not have been able to see it. Um, well, that's all I wanted to ask. The more information we have, the better, right? The direction the professor was facing, that could be important. This information shall be added to the court record. Okay, so I believe... If this was the case, the door's right there. That's the door. Are they, these, they, I guess these rooms just aren't connected at all. That seems very strange, but you know, whatever. Cause they'd have to see the knife that way. Then he wouldn't be pointing the knife at her. Okay. I'm sorry I jumped in like that, but I really wanted to help. Not at all, Espella. We were able to get some more info, which may just come in handy. You think so? You could also be a clueless uh, defense assistant. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's what I figure, too. Now then, the next witness shall continue with the testimony. Mmm, well... She doesn't specifically say that he's pointing it at her. Let's keep pressing for now. Um, would you mind describing what you saw without singing about it? As you wish, my musically impaired friend. Simply put, when I entered the room, the victim was worth his weight in gold, for obvious reasons. He tipped over and fell heavily on the floor. The room became drearily silent. And then I heard that scepter tumbling across the floor. I think it's just her. Hang on! Ooh, ooh, is something wrong? May I ask you something, Miss Primstone? Uh, de dearie, dearie me! Oh, dearie, dearie me. My dear, do not frighten me so. I feel like a schoolgirl caught napping during class. Uh, whatever. Miss Brimstone, did you see the witch's scepter at the crime scene? Well, about that, I must confess I do not clearly recall. You don't remember? When I went into the room, the golden man fell down and made quite the ruckus. That is why I did not notice a scepter being dropped. So you didn't see it after all. 
But I am certain that witch girl had it. She must have been hiding it behind her back. Wow, that's everybody's thing. And she was hiding it behind her back. Uh, Espella, hiding it behind her back. Objection. Please don't assume Maya is a witch just because she's been accused. Miss Primstone is certainly quick to make assumptions. I see. Now we would like to hear the next witness's testimony. This next witness is a bit problematic. Yeah. Hold it. Luke, open your eyes. Maya isn't a witch. Ever since we came to town, lots of unbelievable things have happened. And that's why, from now on, I'll only believe what I see with my own eyes. Luke, when I went into that room, the only people I saw in it were the Professor and Maya. Wow, Professor Layton is crying right now. Golden tears, because he's like, man, Luke, I thought you were good at puzzles. The Professor had been turned into gold, and Maya dropped that scepter. That's not true. What? But Maya, I didn't have any scepter, and we weren't the only ones in that... Silence! The accused has no right to speak. Be silent or you will face punishment. We can end this trial immediately, should you decide to feel talkative again. I, I'm sorry. Well, Luke, is that really the truth? Huh? Um... Did you really see the scepter? I... I don't know. Oh, wait! Oh, no! When the professor turned to gold and collapsed in front of me, everything seemed to fade to black. And then, I could have sworn I at least heard Maya drop the scepter. The scepter was found at the scene of the crime. That is the unavoidable truth. Only the accused could have dropped it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. This isn't looking good. I feel so sorry for Luke. So full of anger and despair that he can't think clearly. You know what would help? One of those, uh, one of those noise, uh, device, the noise lowering devices. Athena, where are you? Oh wait, sorry, this is before your time. He said he can't forgive the witch. I understand how he feels. Anyway, <laughs> not make this any more awkward. I need to find a way to calm Luke down, first of all. Save states. You hate the bard? Yeah, he's not really helpful. Oh, wait, I just realized. Let's see. Uh, wait. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, God. That, uh, that's wrong. Boop, 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 okay. What the, okay, cause she, and then again, she doesn't specifically say he was pointing at her. Cause the floor plan obviously shows him pointing in a different direction. Thank you. Um. You heard the staff fall on the floor. So people heard it, but they didn't see it. the incantation. Oh, no, I didn't want to go to the menu. Sure. 
Charges! Witchcraft, turning him into gold. Okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and use him. Here's my hand point. Okay, so I have to present to him. What am I presenting? Is it... Is it, am I presenting the floor? I guess the floor plan to him. I'm trying to think. Wait, where was Luke? Because Luke would have come in the door with anybody else. But yeah, he definitely wouldn't have seen it. He said he heard it. Objection. Oh, whoa. Luke, you said that you will only believe what you see with your own eyes. Oh, that's okay. You know what? I wasn't even thinking about that. I already forgot that he said that. But what you think you saw may not be the whole truth. Huh? What do you mean? Take a close look at the sketch of the crime scene. At the time of the incident, Professor Layton and Maya were standing here. Now we have learned from Miss Primstone's testimony which way the professor was facing. He was facing this way. Uh, oh! You have testified that the professor confronted Maya face to face. But looking at the sketch of where they were standing, one thing is clear. There is a contradiction in your testimony! Whoa! Yeah. Oh, his legs! I just noticed the bar's legs. I mean, everybody has skinny legs, but still. Oh! Whether they were facing each other or not is of no relevance whatsoever! They were the only ones in that room. One was a victim, thus the other must be the witch. Objection. I will ask you to wait before jumping to conclusions, Inquisitor. Think back to Miss Primstone's testimony. She told us that the professor was pointing a knife at someone, threateningly. However, you can see in the sketch that he wasn't threatening Maya. So then, who was he pointing the knife at? Uh, Luke, what is it? The professor would never point a knife at anyone! I was the one who opened the door to that room, so I was the first witness and I saw no knife! Miss Primstow's testimony is not reliable! Oh, dearie me, will you look at this child sputtering nonsense and talking badly of his elders? Inquisitor Bonham? Yes, my lord? Uh, it should pose no difficulty to verify whether or not the victim had a knife. After all, that sparkling golden body- I thought he said booty at first, and I was like, oh, but he's saying body. Sorry, everyone! Has not- has been found at the scene of the crime, has it not? Indeed it has, my lord. Court attendants, you have heard! Bring the victim into the courtroom! Seems like they're gonna bring in the golden statue. P Professor! No. Oh, look at him! He's so shiny! Oh, okay. Oh, his arm! His arm! Ah! Look at that! Uh, did it get damaged in transit? Uh, Professor! Professor! Damn. So this is the power of the gold transmutation spell. Most spectacular, it looks like the work of the finest artisans. This isn't a time to compliment the witch, bro. Ugh. Sorry. I assure you it is the work of no artisans, my lord. By the way, the missing arm has not yet been found. How has the arm not been found? It was right there. I, 
I can't believe this, P Professor. I suppose we should add the victim to the evidence. Or Professor who, while searching for evidence, became evidence. Professor Layton turned into the gold into gold through the spell Goldor. His right arm is missing. Damn. This is unfortunate. I swear to God, if they make like an arm and a leg like comment at some point during this trial, I'm going to scream. Did Ender sell his arm? I don't know. Is that, oh, I wonder if we're going to run into the pawnbroker. This is unfortunate. I thought the evidence would be as good as gold. But although it technically is, we're still no closer to discerning whether or not the victim was holding a knife. Okay, judge. I mean, Amir might have. This is true. Let me speak, please. Maya, the professor didn't have a knife. And also, there was another person in that room. The real witch was there too, please believe me. I said don't do that or I'll burn you! Accused, do I really need to warn you again? Inside the cage, you are to behave like a bird that has forgotten its song. Speak again and you shall be punished. Or are you in a particular hurry to taste the flames of justice, little bird? Oh, Maya! Leave her alone! But it's true that someone else could have been at the crime scene. Look at this sketch. The victim was facing towards someone and that person wasn't Maya. Sir Blue Knight, your ignorance is no longer even a surprise. Huh? You do not know what transpired at the crime scene. Nobody threatened. I know exactly. We're gonna beat him to death with Leighton's missing arm. You think this man was pointing at another person, you say? Let me tell you this. Nearly everyone in this court other than you knows what Sir Hatch was pointing at. But what? Well, honorable witnesses, is that not so? Hi, Amir Punchinbog. I love me some gossip stories. They occult. Elusive like mist, the magical beast is its chilling breath brings about death. Oh, dearie, dearie me, you could use some education, Blue Knight. I can offer you private tuition, but it will not come cheap. The professor wasn't confronting Maya. Witnesses, you will now testify. Tell us all about this other presence at the crime scene. Oh, he's drunk now. Shadow at the crime scene. Oh. We all know what happened to that alchemist, so this case is no mystery. Same place, same magic trick. This time, her luck ran out as she dropped the magic scepter. The truth obscured by a twisted ruse. The witch couldn't vanish, but did confuse. It happened because the professor unraveled the mystery behind all these witches. So the same magic trick was used. <clears throat> They are referring to an incident from three months ago. Much like this incident, a man lost his life to witchcraft in that very room. It was the master of that residence, Sir Newton Belduke, the alchemist. He suffered death by strangulation. Finger marks were left on his neck. He had locked himself in his study and the key was still in his pocket. In other words, no one could have entered that room. Is nobody else aware of the huge magic circle on the ground? The perpetrator disappeared from a locked room. Just like in this case. A large amount of powdered medicine was spilt all over the floor. Powdered medicine? Oh, the cocaine. Sir Belduke was an alchemist. He possessed various medicinal concoctions. Due to the presence of that powder, had anyone entered that room, clear footprints would have remained. Yet, there were none. That's the kind of mystery that the professor would have loved to solve. <laughs> Thus, there were two unnatural circumstances to Sir Belduke's death. 
the culprit's disappearance from a locked room, and the fact that they appeared not to have walked on the floor. It's almost as if they flew away. In other words, it couldn't have been the Demir magic that was used in my case the other day. Espella, did you find the purple gem magic yet? Yeah, I know, but we gotta figure out. We gotta save the boy. It can't be Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton if Professor Layton is effectively dead. Then that's just Phoenix Wright versus a dead man, which is bad. Not cool. Not cool at all. Seems like the killer levitated above the floor, strangled Belduke, and vanished into thin air. But what does that have to do with this trial? It has been three months since that murder. Despite that, we still haven't been able to find the witch responsible. But now, having eluded us for so long... That witch has finally been brought before this court! We will have justice. But what No way! He th now he thinks Maya killed the alchemist too? Jesus. We weren't even here back then, but it's not like I can explain that to him. Well then, why don't you interrogate the witnesses, now that you are aware of the connection between the two murders? Objection. You can't be serious! Three months ago, we weren't even... Uh... <laughs> Defender, you may interrogate the witnesses. May their testimonies lead us to the truth. He's still drunk as fuck! Cross examination. Hold it! Press. But I don't really know. Boom. Boom. You're talking about Mr. Belduke's murder, which took place in a locked room. Yeah, a real shocker, alright? Everyone was talking about it. People don't say this out loud, but you know, eh? Hey, you're thinking it too, eh? I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. Yeah, they've only been there for, for like a week tops, I think. Ain't it clear as day? He was an alchemist, an alchemist! Alchemy is just like magic, ain't it? Uh, Sir Belduke was a man. Only a woman can be a witch. What's more, witchcraft has nothing to do with alchemy. They're uh, different somehow. Alchemy is the mysterious art of manipulating the forces of nature, or so it is said. Well, that sounds a lot like magic to me. Alchemy's incompre- incomprehensible- is simple to regular people. It's all magic, really. And you know, a couple of days before the witch got him, there was lightning that struck- Lightning? Glad you're asking, because I like telling that one. <laughs> Oh, a sudden, like a bolt from the blue sky, there was a bolt from the sky. Uh, only it wasn't blue. The sky lit up and turned blood red. And then out of nowhere, an old looking bell tower appeared in a burst of flames. Makes you realize Mother Nature is a pretty powerful stuff, huh? Um, uh, you have straight off the topic at hand, witness. This is a courthouse, not an inn. Save your thrilling stories for later. Yeah, lightning made of puzzles, exactly. Yeah, same place, same agitator. Drop. No, I didn't want it! Burr, burr. Press it. the lady. Would you care to elaborate on that, Miss Brimstone? You could say that I'm a scholar and that my knowledge is vast and diverse. I know a thing or two about witchcraft because you're a witch. Therefore, I have a very good idea of the type of magic that must have been used this time. The magic behind this mysterious figure that appeared out of nowhere glided through the air and vanished after making the kill? Indeed, yes, and the witch's scepter confirms my theory. A brilliant deduction. I am honored to have studied under an excellent teacher such as yourself, Ms. Brimstone. Oh boy, butter up, why don't you? She was his teacher. Actually, I guess that kind of explains a lot. Our occult crime and analysts have arrived at the same conclusion. 
Mr. Wright, I found it. The page about the purple magic gem. The spell's called Famalia. Famalia, what does it do? Does it call a familiar? The spell Famalia bound within this purple gem is used to summon a familiar. I'm so good at magic. I'm not a witch though. Probably. Familiars appear out of nowhere, glide through the air, and vanish when their task is accomplished. They are evil, bloodthirsty spirits used by witches to perform outrageous crimes. Evil spirits? Are you saying that the witch used a familiar too? It was a familiar that took Sir Belduke's life, and now it has appeared again. Sir Silcat was probably trying to ward off the evil spirit with his knife. But what good is a knife against an occult creature? It completed the task given to it by the witch and promptly vanished. Thus bringing us to the conclusion that... Sir Belduke and Sir Silcat were both killed by the same witch. What? what? Stop that. What an unexpected turn of events. The two incidents have been shown to be connected due to the same witch's scepter having been used in both cases. Contains, yeah, Goldorn Famalia. Oh, who had that gemstone very firmly attached around their neck earlier, and now it's something else? It's completely weightless, yes. Oh, this is terrible. Now Maya is accused of two murders. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I was right as always. And this gruesome murder will be the next in the next exam. Make sure to take notes. Now I shall divulge what really happened. We're all ears, Miss Primstone. Okay, let's try that again. Did you actually see the familiar? Oh, dearie, dearie me, no, I did not. When that boy opened the door, the familiar had just disappeared. Had the boy opened the door sooner, no doubt we would have all seen it. If he were my student, I would have made sure to teach him not to dilly-dally. Wow, you know what? Luke didn't like that. Luke didn't like that one bit. Just a sec. Is everything all right, Luke? You seem to be in deep thought about something. No, it's not all right. Uh, is there something in Miss Primstone's testimony you'd like to comment on? That's right, I keep telling you. The professor wouldn't point a knife at anyone. Okay, I mean, he did get into like a pretty big sword fight with a dude, but I guess that's different than just pointing a knife at someone. Deary, deary me, what an impertinent child. I'm telling you, I saw a knife. I distinctly saw the glint of a sharp blade. At any rate, as we can see now, the victim's arm is missing. As such, there is no proof that he had a knife. Objection. That is but a mere detail, it matters not. A mere detail matters not! Oh my, anyhow, I wonder, where could that missing arm be? Y yeah, that ought to be looked into! Hmm, that's right, the arm, wasn't it found at the crime scene? I swear, I never saw it there. Oh, golden arm, where can you be? Reveal yourself, listen to my plea. Oh, dearie, dearie me, I'm afraid even I did not notice it. Oh, there's only one person who hasn't said shit about that arm. What if he melted the arm down to make his own jewelry? Ah! Also, welcome back, Seer. It is, astound it is indeed astonishing that the arm could have disappeared from the crime scene. The professor will need his arm when he returns to normal. It's an all out robbery. Go and investigate it. The boy's request is not unreasonable. I will order our occult crime analysis to search for it. How could the arm just up and vanish from the crime scene? That just might be the clue I need to give me the upper hand over Barnum, or the upper arm, as it were. <laughs> the court considers the whereabouts of the arm irrelevant to this trial. What? 
Mr. Wright, make sure you limit your interrogation to relevant matters. Yes, Your Honor. What? Now continue with the interrogation. The truth obscured by a twisted ruse. The witch couldn't vanish, but did confuse. Hold it! It's a, a beautiful song, sure, but would you mind testifying in a bit more of a comprehensible way? As you wish, sir musically impaired defender. A certain man was killed some three months ago. I mean, Sir Newton Belduke, the alchemist, right? It was a locked room murder accomplished through the use of a certain mysterious spell. And that same magic has been used in this case, too. The witch that committed the crime disappeared without a trace. She hasn't been found to this day, huh? That's pretty much what I expressed in my song. I knew all that already. Even a peerless bard such as myself may not always be completely up to date with all the latest information. Isn't that so, Cracker? You understand, don't you, my peerless feathery partner? Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! What an adorable bird! It's imitating you this time, Mr. Wright. I'm being parroted by a parrot. I'm tired of this! We capture all witches without exception. This one may have been at large longer than others, but she will not escape us. Next witness, continue testifying. It happened because the professor, yeah, okay, press. And that mystery is? The witch's identity, of course. Can't believe I'm getting stared down by a little kid. Don't get me wrong. I want to believe you and Maya. Huh? But I saw the witch's scepter on the floor. No one else could have dropped it. When I saw the professor, everything went black in front of my eyes, but I did hear the scepter fall to the floor. Why do you keep saying you saw it? But you didn't see it, you heard it. There was a witch in that room and it had to be Maya. Luke, only the professor were here to tell me what to believe in. What do you think, Mr. Wright? We need to dig down to the truth as soon as possible. For Maya, and for Luke, too. I hope we can do it. It'd be easier if there were some clear contradictions in their testimonies, but I haven't noticed anything. Perhaps this time, we should take a step back and observe each witness while they're not the one speaking. Four of them are listening to each other's testimonies. Uh, yeah, I did. Full of good ideas, Isabella. How about we give that a shot? Sure. But I did! I d <laughs> Hold it. Let's try this again, man. Everybody's like doing the same thing. I don't know, hmm. Is it, I didn't see anybody else like freak out other than that one time. Yeah, they're all, they're all just kind of sitting here. That bard is just doing bard things. Uh, I'm looking at him. Ah, oh, we're gonna watch that again. Okay, well... You guys are all acting exactly the same. Am I supposed to be watching for the parrot? I don't even... Is the parrot gonna be a witness again? Okay, well, no. I already said that he wasn't. He just repeats the same thing. I'm very confused as to what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. Well, you know what? It's time for another hint, because I'm what like what the fuck? Yeah, I did press her! 
Oh god. Yeah, I, 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 I did. Hang on. I questioned him. Oh, unless somebody else said something. Yeah, he wouldn't put a knife at anyone. I feel like I'm just like going in circles. Objection. Ah, now we're just going through this again. Is there anyone suspicious? Hang on. Okay, so wow, fuck you, game. Like, yeah, they're like, doesn't somebody react differently? He wasn't doing anything. But yeah, God, I mean, he does look, he is very suspicious, but still, I'm like, man, that's kind of a roundabout way to do it. May I have your attention, Mr. Amir? Uh, okay, he's just drinking. Come on, let me finish me drink first, Bluey. Are you done yet? Haven't you had enough? Okay. Okay, I get the hint. Forget I asked. In that case, let us continue with the interior. No, he's definitely by- What the- Hold it. <sighs> Okay, this is annoying, actually. Like, I think this mechanic's kind of cool. But also, like, holy shit, there's like 50 million fucking layers to go through. And last time, I swear to God, nobody... Objection. Objection. Uh, <laughs> They all, they're all exactly the fucking same. Like, it's the hint, uh, the hint trying to tell, because he is definitely suspicious. I mean, they're all fucking suspicious. Oh, 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 there we go. There we fucking go. Okay, Jesus. Mister, do you have something you'd like to share with us? Stop fucking drinking. Mr. Amir. Uh, it's Mr. Amir punching bog to I, uh, one to you, Bluey. Okay, that was a one. I kept saying it as I. I mean, it is I, but not. The likes of you ought to show some respect for a future man of well such as me. You seem to be looking ahead to a future full of newly granted riches. I can look wherever I bleed and please. Anyway, why are you looking at me like that? I don't know about a golden bloke's right arm. Excuse me, Mr. Wright. Hm? What is it, Miss Bella? I may be wrong, but there's something about that man. Wouldn't you say he looks, um, suspicious? Not just you, everything about him is so shady, it makes me want to double check my pockets. Mr. Amir, stop pretending you don't know anything about the victim's missing arm. Pretending? I told you I know nothing. Not a uh, zero nil. I ain't seen it, or heard about it, or put it in my pocket. Put it in your pocket? It wasn't me, honest. Seriously, I've got nothing to do with it. How many people are gonna steal from the courtroom? Pawnbroker. Yes! I knew it! Fucking pawnbroker! Uh, order, order! Who is that person? You want to know who I am? I am Price the Pawnbroker! 
And this man is a shameless, cheating bum! He had the nerve to lie to me! What, what did he lie to you about? I'll tell you, on the day of the crime, Amir came to my shop. He waltzed up to me saying he'd got his hands on a superb work of art, rare as gold dust. Oh, I think I know where this is going. Oh, that work of art, could it be? I've got it right here! Wow! What the fuck? There's no knife there. Just like I thought. That's... Oh my. Professor? It's the professor's arm! It's pure gold, exquisitely crafted. And it was entitled, hmm, Towards Tomorrow, or something like that. I'd never seen a piece of gold so fine before, and so, suspecting nothing, I paid that rascal a rather handsome sum. Who would have thought? And what am I hearing now? That it was a human arm, no less. You, sir, are a monster! You're as bad as a witch's familiar yourself. I didn't know it was his arm, I swear! When I saw it, it was already like that! What do you mean? I was last to the scene and it caught me eye right away. It is that golden arm pointing up at the ceiling it's with such optimism and authority. I thought it looks like it's showing me to a better, brighter, richer tomorrow. To me, it was a work of art, a precious one at that. And then it found its way into your pocket and you pawned it. You mounted it on a crude stand, gave it a tawdry title, and passed it off as some kind of sculpture. Don't try and look away from the truth now. Darn it! I, I can look wherever I darn please! Now nah, look away from the facts and forward to the future! Nah, always look on the bright side! That's Amir Punchinbog's motto! Yeah, get him out of here. I'm a freak. Well, oh look, he's with me now. Mine. Mine. Where were we now? Oh yes, the victim's arm has now been successfully reattached by one of our masterful craftsmen. Knights of the court, you may resume the Inquisition. At least one thing's clear now. As everyone can see, the victim definitely wasn't holding a knife. Oh, dearie, dearie me, it seems I may have been mistaken after all. Yeah, why does my arm feel weird? He's just gonna be like, he's just gonna be like, like, well, just point with your other arm now. When you think about it, the victim had already been turned to gold when we entered the room. Yeah, you dumb. <sighs> According to the witnesses' testimonies, that was the case, yes. Well, then I'm sure you'll concede that uh, it was easy to mistake that glittering pointing finger for a knife. Indeed, the victim's finger has a glint to it resembling that of a sword's edge. Sense of, sense of power intensity. It's enough to send a shiver down the spine of anyone being pointed at. No puzzle is a match for the power of the professor's pointing finger. I guess no one remembers that I'm known for pointing like that too. I think your pointing finger makes quite an impression too, Mr. Wright. She's just taking pity on me. Is that all you had to say, Sir Blue Knight? Huh? As I said before, whether the victim had a knife or not is completely irrelevant. Y yeah, what he said. You better apologize to me now. You better give all that shit back to the pawnbroker. Badgering me for no reason like that. Is that all there is to it? Or could the arm hold some other clues? You've come this far, maybe there's something else you could ask about. She's right, I need to ask some more questions. Well then, Mr. Amir. Perhaps you could tell me one more thing about that arm. You found the arm on the floor, pointing upwards, you said. Yeah, I did. Finders keepers, I say. It was pointing straight up at the ceiling. The arm somehow had happened to land or fall down in such a way that it landed upright. 
What are the odds of that? Actually, that reminds me of a puzzle. Oh no! <laughs> Phoenix, no! Now, if you could just show us on the floor plan here, I'd like to know the exact spot where you found the victim's arm. Sure, I remember that well. It was, uh, right there. Hmm, yes. That's where you would expect it to have fallen. Uh, no. Now, if that's where it was, then something's definitely not right. If you keep looking at that sketch so intensely, you'll, you shall burn a hole in it. Or perhaps you're going to claim there's a contradiction in it somewhere? This arm is the final clue left by the professor. Even after turning to gold, he was pointing out something important. Namely, the key to solving this case. Well, Defender, do you see any problems in the locations as marked on the sketch? Hey, there is a problem. Of course, there is a problem. And where would that be precisely? The professor's arm has armed me with some vital evidence. Its location leads to a huge contradiction. In that case, why don't you enlighten us and show us this so-called contradiction? What contradiction does the victim's arm create? Uh, the contradiction of the arm... I figure it's got to do with the magic circle. Oh my... Oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Shit. I'm gonna get a hint, because I hate these kind of things, because sometimes... Oh! Or was he pointing at the staff? He's pointing at the person with the staff. Oh, so he was, he would have been, oh, okay, okay. You know, that makes sense. I was just like, but, the contradiction is right here. And this is the uh, witch's scepter. Let's go over the order of events as per the witness's testimony. First, the witch cast a spell on the professor, turning him to gold. When all of you rushed to the crime scene, that golden statue fell down, making a loud noise. Next, the witch dropped the scepter. What are you getting at, Sir Blue Knight? All witnesses agree that this, with this order of events. That's right, they all agree that's how it happened. But then, there's the arm. Well, what about it? Spit it out! Let's assume that Maya was the witch. Now look at the sketch again. The witch dropped the scepter having, after having turned the professor into gold. The scepter tumbled along the floor. I'm gonna become a real man. And what? Why does your arm feel? I don't know. Have you been sitting on it weird or anything? You need to like move it around. And was found here, as asserted by the prosecution. However, that would be impossible. There's no way it could have been there. Oh, I see it now. The, the arm. It was. I'm glad you seem to have noticed. The victim's arm was on the floor right here, standing on its end. Therefore, the scepter couldn't possibly have fallen that way. Ergo, it couldn't have been the defendant who dropped the scepter. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe, yeah. In other words, Maya is not a witch. Gah! Yeah, taste my sword of justice. Order, order, order! How can this be? The Inquisition's reasoning has been proven invalid through just one single piece of unusual evidence. Call it Layton's magical touch. <laughs> All the ladies love it. The professor sacrificed his arm to leave us just the evidence we needed to turn this thing around. That was amazing, Mr. Wright. Or was it amazing? Get it? Because his arm fell off? P professor? Ah, oh, come on, of course he's got something to say. An admirable deduction, Sir Blue Knight. That, I cannot deny. 
Yeah, how did you feel about this petrifying result? Exactly. You could say that my uh, argument is gilded because that means it's got gold on it and stuff. Anyway. Even if we are to assume that your reasoning is correct and that girl in the cage is not a witch, even if... In the many trials I have attended, I have become well-versed in certain aspects of magic. But I'm not a witch. I can't be a witch. I'm a man. I am all too aware of its potential to confuse people, befuddle their minds, and make their memories hazy. No one can resist such a maddening influence. What are you trying to say, Inquisitor? The scepter could not have tumbled across the floor if the arm were in its way. However, can we be sure that is where the arm was? Are all of the witnesses able to confirm its location at the time? Objection. We've heard what they had to say several times now. They agreed that the scepter fell after the victim fell over. Objection. And yet no one actually saw the scepter being dropped. Witnesses, think back to the incident once more. Did the golden statue fall over first? Or did the staff fall before it? Think carefully about what you've seen and heard. Everything hinges on your testimonies. May your words guide us to the truth and decide the fate of this caged witch. <gasps> ah. Yeah, Luke, come on, bro. Oh. Okay, what is happening? It's about to get ready to leave, but it seems there is need for further questioning. Yeah, you can't leave. Testify once more, witnesses. Tell us of the golden statue and of the Tele Magica. The golden statue and the scepter. I was only focusing on the professor, so I don't remember much else. I don't know, I got there last. Size, that thing was glinting and glittering away, so I couldn't see much else. Yeah, Luke is just nah. Oh no, captions are working. I'm pretty sure. Are you do you mean captions as in like on the, the stream when you guys talk? Bewitched by love or beloved by a witch? The poor cove knows not which is which. What are you talking about? Deary me, I remember how obnoxious it seems now. The staff was dropped before the statue fell over. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What are you all said just now? It's totally different from your previous testimonies. Don't underestimate the power of lying. Sir Blue Knight. You are starting to notice it now, aren't you? That is the way of magic. Such is the effect this black art tends to have upon those who witness it. The witnesses are not lying, but simply have trouble remembering the truth. What a convenient excuse. Confronted with magic, their brains turn to mush, huh? Ever since our ancestors drank from the fountains of wisdom and obtained the capacity for reason, witchcraft has been the one thing to remain incomprehensible, even to the most intelligent of us. Nevertheless, the onus is on us to stand up against magic and pass our judgment on these witches. And so here we are, doing battle with the weapons of the wise. Words. With words, we shall pass judgment upon this supposed witch. 
Defender, you may begin your interrogation and help us arrive at the truth. Okay, cross-examination. Yeah. Luke, you said before that you heard the scepter fall to the floor, and that was after the professor fell over. I thought so. I mean, I thought so before, but now, the more I think about it, the less certain that I, I am that I actually heard it. How could I have been paying attention to anything else when the professor was... when he was... Oh, God. My memories of everything else are too fuzzy. Guess Luke was too shocked to take in his surroundings and notice anything else. That'll get any more information out of him for now. It's gonna be a, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're always like, dudes can't be witches. Uh, wow, that's sexist. Sorry, Luke, I understand how hard this is for you. Let's move on to the next witness. Hold it! <sighs> and that thing would be... The arm, that shiny jet next to you, Bluey! Ugh, poor Professor Layton. More valued now than ever before. And you didn't notice the scepter on the floor? You know, I wasn't even looking at the floor. My eyes were kind of glued to my new source of income. If anything, I may have looked up at the ceiling since that's where it was pointing. Finders keepers and to me pocket it went. Wow, you're a terrible person. Someone arrest this guy, please. Bewitched by love or beloved by a witch? Eh, the poor, what the fuck does that mean? Would you mind translating your song into plain speech? I shall simplify it once more just for you, esteemed knight of the court. First of all, let's talk about love. It's a pretty neat slant rhyme for a cove. A cove is a slang for a chap, you see. Zunder, can you verify this weird bullshit? So is, is this like the butcher's uh, look or hook? What, I can't, I already forgot. Butchers, take a butcher's. Then we have the word witch, and it's homophone witch. Ah, uh, right. Next, we have the delightful consonants of beloved and bewitched. It is ultimately a song about confusion. I'm confused. Try more cockney rhyming slam. Uh, okay. Yeah, I love taking gold statues and melting them down. No! Uh, to be honest, there's nothing more to it. It's merely an artistic expression of my feelings. Yeah? Well, you mind not doing that? So, it's got nothing to do with this case, does it? I am well... Uh, I am a well of melodies, melodious words, and poetic music. That is my only claim. Ah! Oh, dearie, dearie me! Layton! I mean, Leighton. Luke, sorry. Leighton Jr. Luke, would you like to say something? That bard's a piece of shit! Mm. Oh, sorry, guess I spaced out a bit. Uh, what is it, Mr. Wright? You seem to be thinking pretty hard about something during Mr. Birdley's song. Er, testimony just now. Is there something you would like to share with us? Just a second, I'm switching controllers because this one... Other ones acting funky. Well, I've been thinking about what Mr. Barnum said a while ago. What was that exactly? That humans who witness magic become confused and lose sight of what's real, and they end up not knowing what actually happened. Well, I was thinking, Mr. Barnum might be right. And then it occurred to me that there might be a way, I mean, we do have with us, a witness who isn't human. Oh yeah, because Luke can talk to animals. Ah, oh dearie, dearie me. This situation seems oddly familiar. I really wish they'd flash back to the parrot. I asked him earlier if he remembers the events clearly or not. He said he has a memory better than an elephant and remembers everything perfectly well. Yeah, that's right. Almost forgot. Luke can talk to animals. Sound weird. He's not a witch. 
Mr. Wright, I know it sounds crazy, but please let me try. Let me ask Cracker to testify. Ah, oh dearie, dearie me. Should I? I'm stuck now anyway, and the witnesses' testimonies are all over the place. A new testimony would be a wild card, but it might be just the thing to turn this trial on its head, a thing I love to do. But it's a crazy idea, all right. If I make a mistake now, it'll put me in a tight spot. Defender, are you still with us? This is not the time or the place for daydreaming. What do you intend to do? Hm. It looks as though you have exhausted all means for a counterattack, Sir Knight in Blue. Is it not time for you to drop your sword? If you have no further questions for the witnesses, Defender, I will consider your interrogation finished. What will it be then? Are we finished here? I've got zero time to think it over. Better make a choice now. Should I summon the parrot as a witness? Uh, no, let's hear this testimony. Your honor, the defense would like to summon a new witness. A, a new witness, you you say? Do you, who do you have in mind? It's a witness you all know by the name of Mr. Cracker. Mr. Cracker? I know of no man by that name. Mr. Cracker! The defense summons its new witness, Mr. Cracker the Parrot! A, a parrot as a witness? Well, come on, you let this drunk guy here. This is the witch's court. Joking around will be considered contempt of court. Mr. Cracker witnessed the crime. He saw it happen and he heard it too. He's as valuable a witness as the others. N no, 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 no. That bird is nothing but a pet animal. Referring to it as Mr. will not change that. Objection. Humans are confused by magic to the extent that they lose sight of what's real. That's what you yourself said, Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum. Objection. Calling me by my full name does not help justify such a brash foolishness. The Inquisition is against interrogating a parrot. By the way, kind sirs, I suppose you should know that my dear companion never forgets a sound he hears. Hmm? He remembers everything he hears, huh? It's definitely worth asking Cracker to testify. The court sees the situation as follows. The witnesses' testimonies do not hold together. In fact, they are as erratic as that bard's songs. I cannot see this trial getting any more confusing. Very well, the defense may summon this avian witness. Thanks, Judge. Can you believe it? What's up with Mr. Blue Suit summoning a parrot as a witness? S summoning? Does that mean like how the familiar was summoned? He's a witch! By hook or by crook, I'll do whatever I can to save Maya. The ends justify the means, do they, Phoenix? Be it summoning a parrot or a familiar, whatever it takes. Uh, within the boundaries of the law, of course. Yeah, then don't summon a familiar. Uh -huh. Um, all right. Witness, state your name and occupy... This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen! Not so fast, I hardly even know where to begin, but... First of all... What's the matter with that boy looking so pleased with himself? He looks like the cat that got the cream. Ah, oh, that'd be me, wouldn't it? Don't mind me, just think of me as a perch for Cracker, that's all. And just what is the purpose of questioning a bird? A parrot may be able to repeat what others say, but it cannot talk on its own. It's precisely because Cracker doesn't talk in his own words that he's certain to tell us the truth. What? Cracker remembers every sound he hears, even just the once, with absolute perfection. So let's have him testify exactly what he heard. And if Cracker can repeat every sound, I'd say this should be a valuable testimony. I cannot believe this is happening.
A witness cannot, that cannot talk will not lie either. This idea is much to my liking. Cut out their tongues! Well then, may our new witness, Cracker, testify to the court. We wish to know exactly what you heard from the beginning of the incident. Witness testimony. The golden statue and the scepter. Oh, okay. Slam. Clang! Whoa, 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 what? He's, that, what? What, what's this now? Why, those are the sounds of the incident. Exactly as Cracker heard them. Ludicrous, evidently this is nothing but a farce after all. Uh, what do you mean, Inquisitor Barnum? I must admit I found the parrot's testimony quite impressive. Even if that bird can accurately recall the sounds, it is clearly useless when it comes to, to the order of the events. Uh, you mean there's a problem with the order? First, the witch used magic to turn the victim into gold. Then the witnesses arrived. It is reasonable to assume they cried out in terror when they did so. And yet, this testimony does not accurately convey such an order of events. It starts with a sudden scream, followed by the door abruptly opening. Oh, he's saying that. And then a witness crying out. Next, we hear the victim, having turned into gold, falling down. So far, so reasonable. But the real issue is as follows. The parrot seems to think the witch cast her spell after the witness is entered. Such a suggestion is inconceivable! Yeah. The reason is simple. At that time, the victim had already been turned into gold. Ah! Hm. It is indeed as you say, Inquisitor Barnum. The parrot's capacity for imitations is excellent. I will concede that its testimony does have some entertainment value. However, this animal's testimony cannot be allowed to stand as proof in this honorable court of law. Don't write off Cracker just like that! Do you now see how foolish you were to summon this parrot as a witness? What's the matter, right? Cat got your tongue? Yeah, exactly. Hey, what's going on, Ecstatic? Ugh, not good, Phoenix. Not good at all. Should I really go through with this cross-examination when it feels like everyone in the court is against me? No, we're gonna fucking cross-examine Cracker! Your phone, why is your phone so warm? The defense wishes to cross-examine the witness. What, are you serious? Did you not hear what I said? Are you choosing to ignore my words? Because it's ass, oh no, I'm sorry. Speaking of which, I'm gonna put my links out there. Um, but I actually, I caught a bunch of EVs. I don't know how many people do community day, but I got like 13 or 14 shiny EVs total. I didn't go out today because it was like raining and weird, but just being out like a few hours yesterday, it was pretty great. Uh, and I've got most of the EV illusions now. I just have to get, I think, a shiny Leafeon, a Sylveon, and a Umbreon, and actually, I guess I need a lot of them. What? I'm just saying. My Pokeluck is good sometimes. A witness that cannot talk cannot lie either. This parrot's testimony is the naked truth. <gasps> he said naked. He's a witch! He's simply repeating the sounds as he heard them. It's humans who make assumptions about the meaning of those sounds and arbitrarily decide whether the testimony is good or not. But as knights of the court, shouldn't we be striving to uncover the truth to which this parrot holds the key? <laughs> the truth, you say? Very well, show us the truth that this bird purportedly knows. Interrogate that parrot. 
Meanwhile, I shall enjoy the show. Yeah, you'd love to watch me interrogate the parrot, wouldn't you? Will you, will you do it, Mr. Wright? Ugh, do you think it's hopeless? Um... Yeah, another parrot. Except this one is smarter, I think, than the last one. Yeah. Defender, you may interrogate the witness. Cross-examination. The golden statue and the scepter. Was that the sound of a door being opened? Hmm, he seems to be saying, don't ask me, mate. Oh, 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 I got it, I fucked up. Sorry, 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 let me try it again. That guy, oh wait, question. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Birdly. How may I help you, sir? I'd been meaning to ask you this before, but why are you still on the witness stand? Are you suggesting I should leave my dear partner alone with strangers who cannot even sing? It is so good! Layton's theme is just good all the time, but it's even better here. I don't know what it is. Huh? The very sight of Cracker causes the finest of songs to effortlessly form in my mind. Stilton cheddar smoked cheese. I like my crackers with any of these. I hate you. That was the Cracker song. It's not, is it not crisp and full of flavor? No. Right, anyway, would you mind remaining quiet for the rest of Cracker's cross-examination? Yeah, no, Birdly is a troll face, I think. Also, welcome back, Seer. Hmm, I suddenly got the munchies. <clears throat> Continue the interrogation while I smoke this blunt. I think we can all agree that this sounds like Miss Primstone, right? When we entered the room, uh, we all kind of reacted in surprise. Mr. Birdly, can I ask you something? So many questions for Birdly the Bard, but most of them I shall disregard. I have felt your keen gaze upon me for a while now. You can't help admiring me, can you? Uh, the statement you heard earlier, was there anything you'd like to comment on? Mm, I wonder if there was, my peerless companion. What do you think? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on! Oh, Mr. Wright, he's imitating you perfectly. How adorable. I can't say I share your love for the bird, Espella. I feel like it's mocking me. Carry on with the interrogation. Are you relaxing now, Seer? Oh, it is that. Okay, that's... Okay. Clang! Well, first things first, he said something at the beginning, too. Ah! That, that's Maya screaming! Oh yeah, I may have let out a teeny scream. I was so horrified when the professor suddenly turned to gold like that, right before my eyes. That's when. God damn it. The accused seems to yearn for the flame so much that she cannot wait to receive her punishment. Barnum, are you like working out some weird power fantasy with all this witch burning? This new powder stuff, and it worked. Oh, no, that's nice. No weird burning or tinglies. If she wishes to live any longer, she would be wise to remain silent. Uh, I, I'm really sorry, I won't talk again, I promise. Unfortunately for you, Sir Blue Knight, there's no way you can prove that it was the voice of the accused. 
You're wrong, Inquisitor. All we need to do is have her voice print and analyzed and we'll know straight away. Oh, wait. Analyze? What? A voice print? That sounds like witchcraft! Uh, it's nothing. Just forget what I said. Boy, this world is driving me crazy. Alright, well, send me some of those smooth legs later, Seer. Well then, you may carry on with the interrogation. Yeah, you gotta take your sword and just shove it up. Clang. That's... Uh, must be the sound of the professor falling over, I guess. Yeah. Oh, Andy, did you call mom yet, or no? I know Megan, like, threatened to kill us. Well, she'd hear about it. I'm, I'm probably gonna call her once I finish up stream, but... Professor? I guess I better not pursue this one. Luke, you poor thing. Not yet. That's the magic incantation, isn't it? Yeah, I will. Preposterous! At this stage, the victim was already on the floor. The transmutation spell had to have been used much earlier than that. I wonder. Luke, what about you? Um, did you hear the incantation too? Uh. Excuse me. Mr. Birdley, can I ask you something? So many questions for Birdley the Bard, but most of them I shall disregard. He's doing it again. I'm not admiring you. Never mind. Was a statement you heard earlier, is there anything you'd like to comment on? <laughs> Escape prison? No, 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 go, go door, not go to Godot. I wonder if there was. My peerless companion, what do you think? Oh, he's just, this is the, whatever. Uh, press and just go all the way through. Yeah, transmit. Okay. You hear the incantation? La, 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 la. I'm sorry, I, I can't seem to remember. <laughs> After I saw the professor in that in that state, my memory of what happened next just isn't clear. I'm sorry, Luke. I know this is painful for you. Anyhow, the important thing is that incantation. Somehow I get the feeling there's something odd about it. It just doesn't... Go door. Wait, 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 wait. Is Leighton the defendant? No, 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 The defendant is Maya. She's currently in a cage, ready to be burned. Uh, Leighton is currently sitting next to me as a solid gold statue. Yeah, she got... She's being... <laughs> again. Okay, let's... You think there's anything important in Mr. Cracker's testimony? Doesn't seem to be a... Why would the incantation come after? It probably is something about... the door. Misinterpreting, yeah. Because... it's saying go door. Yeah, it's wrong, because it's gold door, not go door. Objection! Objection! Maya can't get a normal hobby. Yeah, Leighton is the victim in this. There is... I, I already told... We, we talked about this before, Ecstatic, but I'll bring it back up. Um, it's not her hobby. It's her kink. She loves being in danger. The danger of possibly going to prison, but not. You know, if you've ever watched Kakaguri, she's like that one chick who gets off on almost dying. Except, for her, it's almost going to prison. 
So the closer she gets, she's just like, ah, yes. And then and then we prove her innocent. She's like, ah, oh, got to do it again, I guess. I think, yeah, the kink of being burnt alive, you know. There is a critical contradiction in this testimony. We are all aware of that, Sir Blue Knight. The con this contradiction is between your so-called desire to find the truth and the fact that you are interrogating a parrot. That's not what I'm talking about, Inquisitor. There is a contradiction here that makes one thing particularly clear. The fact that we have clearly all made the wrong assumption! How so? Oh, hello? Hello? Sorry, my controller just decided to stop responding. Luke, can you ask Cracker to repeat the incantation once more? It was working fine until like a second ago. Oh, there we go. R right you are. Go door, go door. Good. Go door. According to the Grand Grimoire, the name of the gold transmutation spell is Goldor. Now, Inquisitor, it would seem to me that the spell we've just heard is in fact in a different one entirely. Well, I never. Unbelievable. Goldor and Godor. This, this is ridiculous. That wretched bird must have misheard the incantation. Objection. Mm -mm -mm. Bracker is able to imitate sounds perfectly. The incantation was indeed misheard, but only by the people hearing it. The, the, the victim was found in an already in his golden state. That is proof enough that the Goldor spell was used. But you're forgetting that Cracker heard this incantation after the spell had already taken place. Which makes it entirely possible that this Godor spell was used as well. In other words, another spell besides the gold transmutation magic must also have been used. Yeah! But another spell that we haven't yet considered. Now, the next question that needs to be asked is, just what is this Godor spell? Objection. Utter foolishness, this is absurd. As convenient as it would be for you, there is no way that a spell by the name of Godor exists. Oh, Mr. Wright. Huh, what is it? There is a spell called Godor. I found it. The pa Yeah, I bet. Oh, God, guys, it's going to use a fucking emerald. I bet it uses a fucking emerald. It exists. What? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Show me that spell. If bread and French is pain, then I. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that that like something about bread is pain or something before. Order, order! I demand order. Just like I thought. Cracker remembered it exactly. But then, what kind of magic is this Godor? Well, my lord, the Grand Grimoire describes it in the following way. Godor creates a portal on two sides of green colored walls. The portal will disappear after five minutes. Bitch painted the fucking walls green so they could go through the fucking wall to kill the master. Holy shit! Creates a portal? On green colored walls? Portal spell. And it's a fucking emerald! Ah! Get the fuck in here, Gene Grey Earl! You got some splaining to do. Aren't you a lucky man? It appears even the Grand Grimoire is on your side. However, there is a fatal flaw in your explanation. Huh? What, what flaw is that, Inquisitor? It is really quite simple. Think back to how the alchemist's study looked at the time of the incident. Do you remember any green walls? Because I do not, there were none. There, it is a green wall, it's just covered with paint, you dumb bastard. 
All the walls were coated with white plaster. In other words, it was impossible to use Godor in that room. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Hm. I too have visited that alchemist's study since the incident. I remember very well that all the walls in the room were a dull shade of white. Your little theory was interesting, Sir Knight in Blue, but it has proven to be nothing more than that. A mere wild guess. As long as you cannot prove that this Godor spell was used, your little theory shall be considered no further. Mm. In all honesty, I was very surprised to learn of such a spell's existence. However, as long as it was impossible to have used this spell at the crime scene, your deduction leads us nowhere. So let me ask you now. Yes, Your Honor? Do you perchance have any proof that you could show us? Can you prove that it was feasible for the witch to have used Godor in that room? This is no coincidence, that spell must have been used at the crime scene. But do I have the proof? Yes, I do. Naturally, I have proof. Come on. It's been on my mind for a while, that inexplicable mark. It has to be the evidence that ties up all the loose ends. The defense wishes to present evidence. Impossible! The determination in your eyes made me think you would. <laughs> now then, we shall allow the defense to present its evidence to court. Present the proof that the spell Godor was used at the scene of the crime. Bump it up, bump, bump, bump! Take that. Take that, bitch. The walls in the study are coated with white plaster. Not all of them, though. There is just one spot, which is green. Oh, there is? I noticed it when investigating the crime scene. You may recall that there was a small painting behind the desk. And for some reason, the wall behind it was painted green. It... It was what?! I recall seeing that painting myself, too. If we look at this floor plan, I'd say it was around here. Mr. Wright, I'll mark it on the floor plan. Look, yes, magic! It's been bothering me since I saw it, but now it's clear what it was. At the time of the incident, a portal opened up behind that painting. In other words, that was the wall utilized for the spell Godor. Woo! You're certainly persistent. You just want a portal to be there so much, don't you? The wall behind the painting was green, and that's a fact. Incidentally, I remember that painting well. It was a small landscape piece. About the size of, say, an open, grand grimoire. Yes, it was about that size indeed, a small, adorable picture. Even if a portal had opened in that small patch of green, no person would have been able to pass through it. In fact, they'd just about be able, uh, they'd just about be able to put their arm through at the most. Yeah, exactly. So will you please explain how a witch could possibly have escaped? Through a portal this small? He's right, Mr. Wright. No one could have gotten through a portal that small. Have you anything to say? Or are you so crushed by the realization of your mistake that words fail you? The portal was too small for a person. It doesn't require much thinking to figure that out. Uh. But that aside, a very obvious question remains. If it wasn't a human, then what could have passed through that portal? You put an interesting spin on things. Why don't you answer your own question? You talk as if you know everything, so please enlighten us. A small portal was opened in the wall at the crime scene, and I have all the clues as to what that could mean. What went through the portal was, uh, where's the penis? small animal. No, it wouldn't have been a small animal. 
something else because we're, it, I'm pretty sure it was the staff that came through there. Why would it be a small animal though? I mean, I know that uh, they did the familiar thing, which I figure would have been what came out of that magic circle in the middle. It's called, oh, Jesus, static. No human could have passed through a portal that small. The, the Talia was located on the ground nearby. Basically, it's here, so they could have dropped it right there. And it wouldn't have affected the arm that was pointing to the sky. So Maya couldn't have thrown that. Even a witch couldn't have pulled that off. Hmm. So are you finally forsaking your mistaken assumptions? I haven't finished, Inquisitor. The fact remains that something else could have passed through that portal. Oh, and just what would that be, Sir Blue Knight? Uh, oh no, I forgot, yeah, there he is! Professor Layton turned into gold through the spell Goldor. Arm reattached, very good. Sorry, I, I didn't even think about that. The portal was created after the professor had been turned to gold. The witch had a good reason behind that. She must have thought to move something through the portal. You have captured my curiosity. I'd like to know what passed through the portal. Tell us, what did the witch use that magic portal for? The staff, you dumb bastard. Yeah, his arm his arm broke off when he fell down. And um, one of the witnesses, I think I can sh show you the witnesses here. Um, this man sold his arm to the pawnbroker so he could buy all of this jewelry and a fancy goblet. He stole his golden arm and sold it. Yeah, Amir is terrible. Considering the state of the crime scene, there is just one possible answer. And that is the Talia Magica. Objection. What? What? This now? The Talia Magica was found at the crime scene. A portal has nothing to do with it. Objection. Inquisitor Barnum, you're making the wrong assumption. Wrong assumption? You might, yeah, it's okay. The witch wasn't trying to remove evidence from the crime scene. She wanted to plant it. She threw the witch's scepter into the room through the portal. Objection. You, you and your crazy theories, do you even realize what you're saying? If she threw the staff into the room, that means... Exactly, she did it to deceive us. Her goal was to make us draw the wrong conclusions. When the incident took place, the witch herself wasn't in the room. She cast the spell from outside. But what? Order, 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 I say. Okay, there's only one problem with that though. Because unfortunately, Goldor will transmute the closest target within range. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that Pretty sure Maya was closer. Well, I, oh wait, unless he got in front of her. Which he probably would have done because he is a true gentleman. Order, 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 I say. And that's not all. There's even more proof that the staff was thrown into the room from the outside. What, what proof? The proof is none other than Professor Layton's previously severed right arm. Hell? Poor Leighton. The victim's arm, how does that prove anything? None of the witnesses have testified they saw the witch's scepter. However, a few of them claim to have heard it rattling across the floor. That's right. Please take a look at this floor plan. Since the arm was standing upright here, we know the defendant couldn't have been the one to have dropped the scepter. Now think about it. Where would you need to drop the scepter from in order for it to end up here? Oh. Oh! Ugh. That's right. The scepter could only have come from the small portal created by the smell Godor. Woo! 
This is most unexpected. The witch wasn't in the room when the crime occurred. Or at least, that's the defense's claim. It's the only thing that explains all the contradictions we run into. Ah, of course, go ahead, get angry. Sir Blue Knight. With that imagination of yours, you could aspire to write fantasy stories. A <laughs> nice try, I must admit. <laughs> However, this line of assertion is futile. There is a glaring contradiction in your words. Ugh, another contradiction? Whatever are you referring to? This is the Talia Magica that was used in this incident. As we have established, there are two magic gems in it. One for the gold transmutation spell, and one for the shadow familiar spell. Familia, or Familia. A witch in possession of the staff would not have been able to cast Godor. Oh, no, 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 he's actually gonna freak out. Oh, no. No, he no! Oh, he's so smart! Oh my god! Phoenix, are you? Is he? Has he evolved? Has this man evolved? He's not freaking out. But you can't write off all the evidence supporting my theory as mere coincidence. Why must your agreement always be followed by a but? <laughs> because that's the end of my statement, Barnum. Oh, mic drop! Sorry. Thought that 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 was pretty good. Phoenix has become be yeah, big brain. Look at him. He's getting so smart. Also high seer. Yeah, no, because usually at this point he's like, oh my god, how can I do this? But he's like, Meh, no, you know what? I got answers, bro. What I'm getting at is this Talia Magica is not genuine. Not genuine. Looks at her like, I'm not gay, but... <laughs> That's right, and naturally, the one responsible for this deception is the real culprit of the crime. Enough of the suspense! It's too much for a man of my age. The defense shall reveal what is meant by this so-called deception. Is it this one? Is it probably the familiar one? Got it. Yeah, it's got to be the familiar one. First, I want to clarify one thing. Can we be certain that the Talia Magica in question is authentic? Without doubt. The metal rod in its center is called the Spina Magica. It's the magic spine. The witch's mark on its tip is clearly visible and highly detailed. It is impossible to forge, even by the finest craftsmen in all of Labyrinthia. I can guarantee you its authenticity. You know what, Barnum? That sounds like something a witch would say. That leaves us with only one possibility. The forgery in question is the Famalia magic gem. What? A, a forged magic gem? Uh, that is an insult to our investigators. Only witches can use the power of these magic gems, can't they? So tell me, how can you know whether a magic gem is the real thing or not? Objection. Sorry, I gave him a little bit of an accent. Hold it there, we know for certain that the spell Goldor was used. It is undoubtedly not forged. But what about Famalia? Did anyone actually see a familiar at the crime scene? That, that's... Three months ago, when an investigation was carried out in Sir Belduc's death, the results yielded the following conclusion. The spell Famalia had been used to summon a familiar, which in turn carried out the murder. And the witch used exactly that to her advantage. Another similar incident at the same crime scene. Don't you think that would be the perfect opportunity? 
for the witch to frame the defendant for her crimes? The defendant would be blamed for both the professor and Sir Belduc's deaths, and she'd be taken for the real witch. Oh. That was the real culprit's objective. Hmm. Uh. Judge. Okay, yeah. Oh, is everybody realizing this? That maybe everything's not what it seems? There is a chapter in the Magic Archive, an old collection of tales of the occult, about the way to test whether or not a magic gem is genuine. Hmm? How can we test it, my lord? It is very simple. A genuine magic gem is composed of a mineral with a density lower than that of pure water. It's, it's a witch if it floats. If she breathes, she's a thought. I mean, a witch. Sorry, I got my times mixed up. All you need to do is see if the magic gem floats on water. <laughs> that is simple indeed. All non-magical minerals in our world, with the exception of sepiolite and a few other special kinds, sink in water. These eerily sparkling magic gems, however, will never sink when you put when put into water. Bailiff, remove this gem from for immediate examination. Magic gems are fake. What's up with this trial? This is not how it was supposed to be. It's all right, darling. Don't cry. You'll get to see a witch burning today. Sir Barnum never disappoints. Hush now. There, there. Oh, God. Freaks. Oh, stop. Shut up! Defender. If your theory is correct, this could be the biggest occult crime in history. But another important question remains. I wonder if you can answer it. The child desires blood sacrifice. Who is this supposed real witch that threw the Talia Magica through the portal? The real witch? There's only one person that comes to mind. Frankly, I still find it hard to believe, but it's the only possibility. Once I indict her, there'll be no turning back. Knowing the consequences, should I... Should I give them her name? Mr. Wright! In Labyrinthia, witches are punished by fire. I know you think that's going too far, but even in a world that seems so insane to you, those who take the lives of others must be punished. That's a universal law, isn't it? The witch turned the professor into a golden statue. And that's not all. She took the life of the alchemist, too. Now she's trying to pin the whole thing on Maya. I, I can't just let her get away with that. Well then, Defense, let us hear your theory. Who is this witch responsible for using Godor and then throwing the scepter through the resulting portal? It's gotta be Jean Grey Earl, because they're very androgynous, and I, I have a feeling that they're actually a woman. This is another Robin situation going on here. I mean, the only other person it could be would be Miss Primstone. But I don't think it's her. I really think it's... Because they were the only one not in the same room. Take that! Yeah, the music stopped! Good! When you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be true. That boy has a vagina! There's only one logical possibility. It has to be that person. The real witch is Jean Grey Earl. Hmm? Ray Earl? I heard that name somewhere. What are <laughs> you <Just> saying? <laughs> Wait, isn't that the butler who serves Sir Belduke? That's correct. Objection. What's this about? You seem to love rolling around, uh, rolling out these ridiculous suggestions, but you ignore the obvious. Jean Grey Earl, Grey Earl is male. Yeah, did you just assume his gender, Barnum? Inquisitor Barnum, tell me one thing. Have you ever seen a vagina? Is it only females who can be witches? Are you daft? Of course it's only females. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. They identify as a witch! 
That's their gender. W for witch. <laughs> Never in the history of this court has there been a male witch. You're so utterly ignorant, you should be ashamed of yourself. All right, well, I'd like to ask another question. Is Jean Grey Earl really a male? Have you seen their penis? Can you tell me what it's like? Is it big? Hmm? What? What a ludicrous question. Answer me, have you seen their penis? The defense is certain that Jean Grey Earl is the witch responsible for using magic on Professor Layton. Devilish woman magic. Objection. Will you stop fooling around? This is a groundless accusation. Objection. Groundless, <laughs> you say? I'm afraid that's where you're wrong. At the time of the crime, Jean Grey Earl was in the, ne the room next to the alchemist's study, and one of the walls in that very room was painted green. It, it was? What's more, that green wall was the one adjacent to Sir Belduc's study. What? This is madness! Inquisitor Barnum, quickly! Have the butler summoned to the court. Have Jean Grail brought here immediately and disrobed. Certainly, my lord, it shall be done. Get, out, get, get in here, Jean Grail. There is no need for that. <gasps> Hi. Oh, I'm here. I am here. I shall come down right away. Where did your emerald go, Jean Grey Earl? Trying to fucking oh, take the blame off yourself? Well then, Mr. Wright, shall we begin? Yeah. Jean Grey Earl. It would seem that this trial has turned in a new direction. I think we all need a bit of time to take it in. We shall take a brief intermission. Inquisition, defense, Sharpen your swords and wits to prepare yourselves for the next stage of this battle. Yes, your honor. It shall be done, my lord. By the time we resume, the examination into the magic gem should have ended as well. Now, the court is adjourned for a brief intermission. Yeah. All right, and this is a good time to stop um, the first recording. Oh, it's going to make me save anyway. Holy crap, two and a half hours and part one of this trial is over. Man, I called it so early on, especially after seeing that gem change. Ooh, boy! Oh.